I'm Amanda. Welcome to All Access Eats. Some of you may already know me as an actress and a filmmaker and the daughter of Meatloaf. But what you might not know about me is that I have a passion for cooking. And I absolutely love cooking for my friends and family. You see, I grew up on a tour bus, traveling the world with my dad. And some of my earliest family meal memories come from those that we had backstage with dad's band and crew. And my earliest culinary experiences come from learning to cook those comfort dishes from chefs all around the world who are cooking for our big tour family. So now I'm here to share those recipes and those stories with all of you. Like I said, I love cooking for my friends. And one of the recipes I get asked about most is of course my family's meatloaf. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make meatloaf's meatloaf. His original recipe can be found in the rock and roll cookbook, but I've tweaked it just a little bit. If you've ever had any classic American casserole, then you know that the combination of starches and liquids is really what holds everything together. So that's what we're gonna start with. We're gonna make a little panade of uh, all of our dry and wet ingredients. So first we're gonna start with one cup of whole milk. Then we're gonna add one large egg plus one yolk. But egg whites by themselves can be very drying. So we don't add too much egg white, but we wanna add that yolk in for the binding agent. Next, I know a lot of you are probably used to using ketchup in your meatloaf. My little trick, my little secret that I'm gonna share with you today is tomato soup condensed tomato soup. So we're gonna add a quarter cup of condensed tomato soup to our panade. Next, we're gonna add, this is one teaspoon of paprika and one teaspoon of just fresh ground pepper. Because what we wanna have happen here is for all these spices and the herbs that I'm gonna add right now, which is uh, one tablespoon of ch chives and one tablespoon of tarragon. Here, I'm adding about six cloves of garlic um, that's a lot for most people I know. So you can certainly use two or three. Garlic is really something to taste. Uh, we love a lot of garlic in this house. So I'm gonna go ahead and add six whole cloves. Next, uh, panko. So everybody knows to use breadcrumbs, panko crumbs for your meatloaf. Uh, it again helps as a binding agent. But here's something a little different that I picked up at the store I'm really excited about. So this is actually a pork panko. So that's going to add a lot of flavor, but still act as a binding agent. Really awesome. And then finally, I'm going to add one cup of uncooked rice. I really like the texture that rice adds to my meatloaf. So there it is. I'm going to get all of this stirred up together. Look at that. It smells awesome and it's going to be more evenly dispersed throughout the meatloaf than if I added them directly to the meat. All right, so now we're gonna set our panada aside and we're gonna work on the protein and veg base of our meatloaf. So now that our panade is soaking up all of these awesome different flavors and herbs and spices, we're gonna go ahead with the meat. So you can use any combination of meat that you like in your meatloaf. Personally, I like to use half ground beef. So one pound of ground beef. And then I also like to use a pound of ground chicken. So the reason I like to use half ground beef and half chicken, that beef adds a, that really bold flavor that we're used to with a meatloaf. But if you've ever cooked a chicken, you know that the fat and the chicken will sort of gelatinize, and that's what it's gonna do in the meatloaf. It's gonna act as another binding agent and really help for the loaf to form and stay together when we slice it later on. So now I'm gonna add one teaspoon of salt. And the reason why I'm adding it to the beef and the chicken instead of to the panade is so that it can help to bring out the moistens and the protein in the chicken and the beef. And we're gonna work it now so that we bring those proteins together, we bring the moist in, like I said. So that's the, um, the agent that helps keep uh, proteins together. And we want it to feel a little sticky. So that should be about right. Because we're gonna keep working it a little bit too as we add our vegetables. Next, we are gonna add half of one large onion, diced. Next is one whole green pepper, 
diced and carrot. So this is about three carrots shredded. I turned out to be larger carrots than I was expecting, so I'm not going to use quite all of it. But I want about equal amount of carrot, onion, and green pepper. Now let's work it again a little bit. We get those veggies, working with the meat and the proteins. Just a little bit, because we are going to, like I said, work it again once we add that panade in. And I don't know at this point whether I should acknowledge my partner, Chill, in the background. <laughs> he is my partner and my cheerleader. You and my show producer. <laughs> all right. So that's all been kind of mixed in there real good. Now we're going to go ahead and add the panada. It's had just enough time where you can see that liquid has kind of now been soaked up and it's kind of thickened a bit. So now let's go ahead and add that. And we're going to work this one more time. Just get everything nicely together. One more time, washing these hands. And then we'll put it in the oven. So here it is, our meatloaf in the pan, ready to go in the oven at 350 degrees for 45 minutes. While that's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and work on the glaze. So just like I like to use tomato soup in the base of my meatloaf, I also like to use it in the glaze. I think that it still adds that bold tomato flavor, but there's a creaminess to it, and it's a little bit more subtle than ketchup. Next, I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of white wine vinegar. Next, we're going to go ahead and add two tablespoons of brown sugar. So this is going to be that sweetness that you're used to with a meatloaf glaze. It's also going to act as the conduit for the caramelization of the glaze. Then we're going to go ahead and add one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And finally, here I have one teaspoon each of salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. So again, just bringing out some really nice, bold flavors. So we've got sweet, we've got savory, we've got a little bite with the vinegar and the Worcestershire. So it's just, have a, it's a little party. It's a little party in our mouth. So we're gonna go ahead and stir this up. We're gonna let this sit for the 45 minutes while that meatloaf is cooking. So here it is, our beautiful meatloaf. It's looking really good, really happy with it. So we're gonna go ahead and glaze it. So here it is, our glazed meatloaf. We're gonna go ahead and put it back in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes until you start to see that glaze get nice and brown and have that caramelization with the brown sugar happening on top. I've already put a baking sheet in the oven, so this is gonna sit right on top of that baking sheet just to make sure that we don't have any spills and extra mess in our oven. Our finished meatloaf, straight out of the oven. Before I took it out, I made sure that the internal temperature was 160 degrees. You don't want a raw meatloaf. But let's go ahead and cut into this and see what it looks like. Look at that. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take a bite of this, tell you how it is. Let's get a bite of this glaze up top, here we go. Mmm. This is perfect. It's a little sweet, it's savory. I can taste the carrots, the bell pepper. It is still super moist, but the rice just gives it that added awesome texture. Trust me, I promise if you make this, your whole family and your crew is going to love it. Thank you so much for watching All Access Eats. Please subscribe to my channel for more episodes. Leave a comment, let me know what you like, and I'll see you next week for more recipes from the road.